Reuters has an inside look at Germany's hydrogen hopes and dreams. And Gen H2 announces the release of their small-scale mobile hydrogen liquefaction system. All of this on today's Hydrogen Podcast. So the big questions in the energy industry today are, how is hydrogen the primary driving force behind the evolution of energy? Where is capital being deployed for hydrogen projects globally? And where are the best investment opportunities for early adopters who recognize the importance of hydrogen? I will address the critical issues and give you the information you need to deploy capital. Those are the questions that will unlock the potential of hydrogen, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. In an article in Reuters.com, Germany's energy crisis powers hydrogen switch, written by Luisa Off and Reham Alcusa. From the moment Russian gas exports to Germany were first disrupted in June, German firm Kelheim Fibers began casting around for alternative options to keep its engines running. As a result, the Bavarian-based firm, whose fibers are used in anything from tea bags to tampons, will be able to use heating oil instead of gas starting mid-January. The downside is that it will increase carbon emissions for the longer term. The firm is considering a switch to hydrogen, which is a much cleaner energy source provided it is produced using renewable power. In a quote from Craig Barker, managing director of the 87-year-old firm, we want to be one of the first large companies in Bavaria to switch to hydrogen. Energy costs account for over 60 to 70% of the company's variable expenses, overtaking that of its main raw material. This is again according to Barker. Kelheim Fibers is one of many small and medium-sized companies that form the backbone of Europe's biggest economy and that are seeking to diversify their energy mix to maintain output. Russia's reduction of gas supplies to Germany following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February has forced Berlin to reactivate or extend the lifespan of its coal-fired power plants, putting greenhouse emissions targets in jeopardy. However, Economist Klaus Volraba said the crisis could eventually lead to greener production. He says relying on fossil fuels for the long term has proven to be a risky path. So in the medium term at least, companies have had no choice but to reorient themselves. Kelheim Fibers, which has so far covered 85% of energy needs with gas, is in talks with stakeholders over hydrogen imports with an expected annual consumption of about 30,000 tons starting from 2025. Again, according to Barker, we definitely need infrastructure. This he said, adding that a pipeline will be needed to connect to the German refinery Bayern Oil and a port to cover the demand the company cannot meet from domestically produced hydrogen. Earlier this month, Germany's Economic Affairs Ministry approved the construction of the country's first hydrogen pipeline network. It also announced an action plan to support small and medium-sized companies as they switch to climate-neutral production, including expanding hydrogen infrastructure. More is required to accelerate investments in hydrogen, including a hydrogen act to cut bureaucracy and regulate the hydrogen ramp-up quickly. Utility Industry Association, BDEW, said earlier this month, And according to BDEW President Kirsten Andre, 2023 must provide new impetus for investments in renewable energies, hydrogen, hydrogen hydrogen-capable gas-fired power plants, and energy networks. Okay, so a bit of a peek behind the curtains on how Germany is looking to implement their hydrogen needs. Now, it's really not a surprise to know that Germany is going to be requiring a large share of the hydrogen being produced around the world. And this Kilheim Fibers is a very good example of that, as a small to medium-sized company requiring 30,000 tons starting in 2025. And there are still a lot of questions surrounding how will this hydrogen be implemented and utilized, and how are they exactly going to pay for all of this hydrogen? Every single news article and press release that comes out about Germany's hydrogen landscape always talks about renewable electrolytic hydrogen. And if that's the case, that that's all they're bringing into the country, I'm wondering if they're really going to be relying on economies of scale to drop the cost of that hydrogen into an economic range. I'm also, like I said, very curious to see how this hydrogen is going to be utilized. It's entirely possible that they could be looking to put it into some kind of combustion generator to generate electricity, 
Or would they be looking to possibly leverage more fuel cell applications to generate electricity on sites? Either way, it's going to be a very costly endeavor, and I'm going to be curious to see over the next three to four years how these decisions are going to pan out. Next, in a press release on December 23rd, U.S. hydrogen infrastructure leader Gen H2 launches groundbreaking mobile liquid hydrogen system. Gen H2, an industry leader in hydrogen infrastructure solutions, announced the launch of its groundbreaking LS20 mobile liquid hydrogen system, an end-to-end -end liquefaction and storage system. The innovative mobile liquefaction unit offers a space-optimized, fully integrated liquid hydrogen solution to be used in a range of applications from transportation to energy backup to accelerating the use of liquid hydrogen through pilot projects and testing. It will also be utilized as a lab setting for testing material, insulation, thermodynamic properties, and use cases for their applications. With a mission to provide light-scale infrastructure solutions for liquid hydrogen, Gen H2 designed the LS20 with the capability of producing small amounts of liquid hydrogen in order to provide access to more hydrogen researchers and hydrogen industry players. The LS20 can produce between 2 and 20 kilograms of liquid hydrogen per day to provide liquid hydrogen at the ready when and where it's needed. 20 kilograms of liquid hydrogen contains nearly 2,400 megajoules of energy and can be readily stored and used within Gen H2's ultralight utility tank systems. In a quote from Zhang Bake, Chief Technology Officer of Gen H2, the development of the LS20 has been a culmination of decades of experience in engineering within and in conjunction with NASA providing researchers and developers of hydrogen infrastructure with a modular, efficient way of getting their hands on liquid hydrogen is a vital requirement to advancing the hydrogen industry. The smallest liquid hydrogen mobile unit currently commercially available, the LS20 is self-sustaining and can run independently with a portable generator or plug into a building's power source. This makes the LS20 ideal for dispensing fuel to multi-purpose drones and providing an emergency power supply to first responders. Additionally, the LS20 units are manufacturing ready to keep up with the increasing demand for hydrogen and enable faster infrastructure build-out and adoption. According to Bake, with its flexibility, compact size, and speed-to-market capabilities, the LS20 is a game-changer for a rapidly growing hydrogen industry. The LS20 is designed for those areas where relatively compact systems are necessary to enable hydrogen viability. As a complete system, the LS20 can liquefy, store, and dispense liquid hydrogen from any gaseous hydrogen source, such as a storage tank or an electrolyzer. This compact, flexible system offers the user the ability to provide liquid hydrogen where and when it's needed. The key features of the LS20 technology are... Convenient and safe liquid hydrogen production on demand between 2 and 20 kilograms a day. DOT approved 400 liter capacity liquid hydrogen storage tank with zero boil off storage feature. Fully automated liquid hydrogen production storage level control and monitoring system. Zero loss liquid to liquid transfer system with hydrogen gas recovery bag. Detachable liquid hydrogen storage tank for separate liquid hydrogen transport. Innovative quick connect vacuum jacketed receptacles, ultralight liquid hydrogen tanks for hydrogen mobilities such as cars, drones, UAVs, and trucks, hydrogen detection sensor, oxygen monitoring, IR hydrogen flame detectors, and multiple pressure relief devices and advanced emergency venting systems. The LS20 also serves as a foundation for higher capacity Gen H2 systems, including the 100 kilogram LH2 per day and 1000 kilogram LH2 per day solutions. Once deployed, these solutions will be an innovative addition to the options for advanced clean energy. The LS20 demonstrates Gen H2's continuing support for the expansion of the hydrogen economy. The company is working closely with the Department of Energy, NASA, various universities, and energy companies around the globe for a better tomorrow. Okay, so this press release really is amazing in and of itself. But when adding this release, along with the news from Hyperion about the XF7 hyperfuel system, I'm starting to see some real amazing advancements in mobility fueling with hydrogen. 
Now, the LS20 system that Gen H2 is talking about may have more of a niche application with only 20 kilograms a day of production. But as this technology develops and they're able to offer the 100 kilogram and 1,000 kilogram per day options, I think we can then start to really see some major applications worldwide for mobile liquid hydrogen refueling. All right, that's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always, if you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at thehydrogenpodcast.com. And as always, take care, stay safe. I'll talk to you later. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www.thehydrogenpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.